To the top left of Ohana in our Terran vs Terran, we have the NS Hosa player. He's down a map in the up and downs. It is... NS Hosa Chakji. Chakji with a loss against Pold and therefore he really needs to make this one count. Former GSL champion fighting for a spot in Code S here. And his opponent to the bottom right is a Slayers player. It is none other than... Slayers Ryung. The thing about Ryung is that he is actually a great TVT player. He has a, it is his best matchup historically. But lately he has been struggling a little bit. He was able to take a game of uh, rain at MLG. But be, um, before that he lost to uh, Happy with 2-0 in the... Uh, um, well, in the GSL Code A, that's exactly why he's now in the up and downs. He lost to the Muslim at the NASL, and he lost to MDP in uh, Code S. So, the last few games that he had against Terran were not all that successful, but it's still a matchup where he's really strong. And Jokchi, well, we are going to see how well he's going to fare against Ryang here on Ohana. The last Terran versus Terran that he played against Pold was not really what he expected, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that, that game was not your average game. Yeah. I mean, he got behind from the start. It's hard to judge him off of that. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what he's doing against Ryung here, though. Ryung does take a gas at normal timing. He is spotted. The barracks is hidden, but it's not going to come into play here. Jokji puts down a second depot. Uh, or, or Ryung does a bunker going down for Jokji actually before command center, as he is afraid of potential Marauder Rush. Yeah, he did not scout the barracks yet, so he does not exactly know. And he scouts with another SCV. Just have a quick look to the top right, where we have currently one SCV scouting if there's any kind of uh, proxy barracks. So, cancels the bunker as he realizes as well the expansion, uh, the, it was built at the bottom. And now, very interesting for Ryang here, he's not going to get any kind of expansion. He's going immediately for the uh, factory. And the positioning is just so funny. Everything's at the low ground now as he needs to build the, um, the add-on here. Goes for the reactor. Yeah, reactor first. Uh, that's going to mean that very likely we're going to see a marine tank, banshee slash viking push off one base. The banshee play for harassment on this map is not very good. There's not a lot of space to the north of each base for the banshees to hide. So if you try to harass the mineral line, you can very easily get caught. There's not really... If you try to escape, the Marines will be able to hit you the whole way. He could just go for a few Hellions, for Marines and a Medivac, and as he's building the Command Center right now, that's probably exactly yep. what he's going to do. Jokji is already getting additional gas, and oh, we going. he's going just for Hellions, Reactor Factory Hellions. How do you feel about Reactor Hellions in this matchup? I mean, they sometimes work out, but it's a lot of minerals spent into Hellions that, unless you're going to go for mech, aren't necessarily useful later on. This I is one... This one quote that Mr. Bitter, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, said at some point Hellions are always cost efficient. <laughs> I kind of agree. <laughs> Hellions are always a good investment. No, but um, jokes aside, the thing is with the Hellions, he can do a lot of potential damage here, but he needs to make sure that he really um, is able to go up the ramp. And he has to suspect that Jaggi has a few Marines positioned on top of the ramp, so two Hellions just won't cut it. He will be able to get the Zalnaga Watchtower with the Hellions with the first initial two, but that's basically if all he that like, he should do. If he like waits for six and then just runs up and there's no bunker, I mean, he might be able to really do some damage, but... I, normally there's a bunker in the first place, and even without a bunker, let's see how much these let's four can do. This actually could, he hit this could do some damage. Yeah, this could do a lot of damage. He was hiding the Hellions, and now we have four Hellions and the Marines coming up here, leading with an SCV. He sees the Marines, and he's going in. He's trying to take them down. Nice splitting by Joshi, but with no bunker here, he's going to lose quite a few. Exactly, he's going to lose all his Marines. Yeah, this is... This is why if you go pure marine, bunkers are usually something that you want to have at the top of your ramp, but Joshi cutting a corner here, and similar to his game against Pult, he's paying for it a little bit. Yeah, thankfully not. He didn't lose any uh, any economy, so that's the one huge thing that is definitely a bit different when we compare the game to a Pult's attack on uh, the last map, on the first match today. 26 to 27 SCVs at this point, and already now the first tanks in production are for Ryan. So Ryan has kind of the same Huge economy as Jokji. He's a little bit, um, a little slower with the second orbital, but on the other hand, he has, as you just said, a huge lead in tech. It, and back in his base, he is adding those two additional barracks, so he's gonna, the only thing he's gonna be behind in is his marine tech, like he's not gonna have stim or combat shields. He's not going to have any uh, upgrades, like we see Jokji researching plus one right now. 
So he's going to really rely on his medevac tech as well as potential siege tank tech to allow him to pressure and hold off pushes. He's not going to be able to defend. Like, for example, if Joshi goes in with a medevac drop with Stim, you know, quick, quickly on here, even with just combat shields in the medevac, he won't be able to defend it without his own stem very easily. But Jokshi has not even started to starport yet, so it's not something Ryung is really going to have to worry about. The way this game has played out has been kind of weird because of the, the early pressure that we saw. Jokshi's marine count's lower than he wants it to be. He's trying to tech up now, and is still, you know, he, he had to make a bunker because he wasn't sure what Ryung's follow up was. Now Ryung hasn't started a third command center. I felt like. If I'm Ryung, I make a third command center at my natural, use my siege tanks to defend. Yeah. Don't make it at the third base, because I know my opponent has a lot of marine presence, but I would make a third command center. I think that's what he's probably going to do. We had a quick scan for both players, actually, trying to, uh, to find the tech and see what exactly is up. And he sees the uh, reactor at the at the star port. So no banshees. That's the one thing that he's aware of right now. Plus one, plus one for both of them. Jackie's a little bit faster. We saw on uh, uh, Atlanta's Space Bell already, again in the game against Paul, that he really prefers to get early upgrades against Terran opponents. Ryung has no idea what his opponent is doing as far as scouting goes. He only saw the top of the ramp kill Marines. He didn't even see the command center. That's like not even in his vision. He knows it's there, but at this point, he, I guess, does not feel comfortable taking that third command center just yet. He's now positioning his Marines in his main base to defend against drops. His stim timing a little bit behind Joshi, but Joshi doesn't have stim and combat shields. But since he lost so many Marines early on, his Marine count is actually less than Ryung. So with Ryung's siege mode finishing up here, he still has, I think, most of the advantages. I wonder what Joshi is going to try to do to get ahead. He's going to try to do drop play. Yeah. But that's exactly what Ryung has already expected. He sends out the medivac, and what I kind of like is that uh, Ryung over the entire course of the game was able to secure both the Zelaka Watchtowers with his Hellion. So there's a lot of scouting information. Sees now the Marines of Joshi moving out. And the one thing that Jakji wants to achieve here is also just trying to distract his opponent in order to uh, get maximum damage with his drop. And we'll see how successful this is going to be, as uh, Ryang had a few Marines in his base, but I'm not quite sure... Yeah, okay, he doesn't pull... He wants him to, he wants I, him to I, drop it off. I actually thought for a second that he was going to pull the Marines away, and uh, but now he just moved a little bit farther back behind. He and knows he's got the tanks on his nav. Look at this. We have one Marine position yeah. to the right, he spots the drop, and great, the Jokshi great is like, well, you know what, you already spotted what I'm doing, so I'm just not going to do it, I'm handing back home. It's, it sucks for him too, man. He's got to send his main Marine force back as well. Ryung had positioned Marines in his main to defend drops, and siege tanks in his natural defense in a straight-up attack. The only thing that was vulnerable would be a potential third base, but neither of these players, in fact, have made third command centers just yet. They're ba basically just getting as close to max as possible before doing that because they're so afraid of what their opponent is doing. Ryung playing a little bit on the defensive here, now getting even a second factory before third command center. He has a very, very passive game from both of them, and, well, Siege Tank mode is now coming up for Jack G2. He's trying to posture a little bit to just move out here, but a third base is probably going to go up for Jack G in just a few seconds. He has already an SCD up to the top right. Now that's exactly what he should do. As you pointed out, I was actually surprised that Ryang did not get another command center when he uh, was trying to get aggressive and uh, force his opponent to stay put on uh, his two bases. Right now the upgrade advantage is going to be in Jokshi's favor. 1-1 one, one versus just plus one on the Marines, but Ryang has five siege tanks out right now. They're all with his army. If he catches this army of Jokshi, which he's now seen it, oh man, this could be terrible for Jokshi. He catches him, he sieges up first! And so many Marines, even though Jax has, has the many advantage. Tanks. He has too many tanks. Ryan has way more tanks, but the Marines! Yeah, man, the Marines are enough wow. with the upgrade advantage. And man. here comes the second round of Marines this for Jokshi. And can he kill the Medivax? Nah, I don't think so. But, you know, I actually looked at the Marine count on the unit tab, and I was like, all right, that must be because... He must actually win this fight because he's got so many more Marines, but now I'm like, oh, he had a ton of his Marines in his main for drop defense, so he actually didn't have all of his Marines with him. And even though he had still a fairly even Marine count actually out on the field, Jokshi's upgrades were just too good, and he had the better concave. He had the better split there. Jokshi's now also in the supply lead, and Ryang feels kind of comfortable enough to take a third base, but this is exactly where Jokshi's headed with his army. He's trying to go down the ramp right now, and he will encounter Ryang's po uh, army position at the low ground. Also, tank already sieged up, and ooh, a little bit of a problem here, Pathing as one of the mistake. tanks is out of position, and yeah, he dies. Pathing problem here for Jokshi, costs him one siege tank. Yeah, a bit of a mistake there, but 
not too big of a deal. The third base is defended, however, and Jachi starts his third a little bit later. Uh, he killed the SCV building the third, though, and there's no replacement until just now. Still slightly ahead. Armory's going up for both players who will start their 2-2 upgrades. And Ryan knows about the expansion at the top right. He has the Marine in position to just spot the expansion. He knows about everything, and there comes one. Uh, he, he's <laughs> he takes down the SCV. Nice. The army of Jachi trying to... Uh, trying to prevent it, but a little bit too late, and now he has to send out another SCV. So basically, the exact same thing happened to Jack-Chi, what he did to Ryang earlier. This killing is such the worker a close game. Command you know, like, look at the, the timings of these command centers are so the even. Supply. The supply, supply yeah. for both. And look at the upgrades. They're going at basically the same time, slightly ahead for Jokchi and even his uh, vehicle up slightly ahead. But, I mean, as far as production goes, they're both making two tanks at a time around the same amount of Marines. It's looking like... We are going to have a game that is decided not by macro ability, not by multitask by ability, position. but by positioning, exactly. And, well, at this point, Jokchi is the one who tries... Actually, they, they don't try to be too aggressive. Jokchi just posturing a little bit, trying to move in and force a reaction by his opponent, but he does not overcommit here to anything. And uh, moving out with his army, but both of them with exactly the same upgrade count. We have similar unit counts as well. A little bit heavier on the Marines, Jokchi that is. He has less tank than Ryang, but he is making up for it with a lot more Marines. And uh, at this point, drops could also be very successful, but Jokchi has already sensor tower, so Ryang would be in a bit of a problem if he would rely on drops here. And on the other hand, Ryang has a few misunderstandings in his main base, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, this is actually going to be really good for Jokchi if he sieges first. However, Ryang smartly gets the first siege up. He scans ahead, decides to pull back, only loses a few Marines. This is a pretty even trade for both players. Once again. Yeah. Uh, this is scanning. Yeah, this is another tank. The tank count. This positioning is better spread for Ryung right now. The tank count is 8 to 6 in favor of Jokchi. Ah, uh, nice. Sniping the medivac. That was really important. Man, so he doesn't have the, see, uh, the range now. Oh, well, this is actually pretty His run by was shut down as well, but, you know, Jokchi can no longer really move forward because his opponent's got the better defensive concave here. He's going to try to go for a drop, it seems. And I like it. Draw play, as I pointed out earlier, is something that can really bring him a huge lead in the game. If he's able to get a drop at the third, for example, if he heads to the bottom left. At this point, just a few small fights every now and then. One of the players battle, trying you know? to snipe one or two units. Oh, we try to drop onto the siege tanks, lost but whole group of lost men, everything right? as Ryang shuts this attempt down. Both of these players are a little bit sloppy with their control, uh, trying to hold their positions here. He's just losing more units left and right. You guys didn't even get a shot of it, but Ryung now lost a huge group of Marines. Ryung gets plus three plus three. Jock G delayed his last set of upgrades. He's on 2-2 two, two as his opponent, and here comes the plus three attack upgrade for him. So he tries to get the same amount of upgrades, but he might just skip on the armor upgrade. That's something that we see very, very often, and this would give Ryung an edge in the late game. Yeah, that's true. I'm wondering why neither of these players have tried to go for a big drop. Yeah, there's drop defense in play, but if you go for a big drop, even if it's like three medevacs full, with the defensive position you have, three medevacs full Marines is not going to allow your opponent to win a fight. So... Supply oh. numbers are one thing. Oh, he's, he's, he's tricking him a little bit here. He unseated some of his forces that are in view, and then the rest of his tanks that were not in view are actually still in position. That was pretty cool. Trying to take the Watchtower vision away from him, but he's going to have to get back as the Siege Tanks are in range of the Watchtower. That Watchtower is a no-man's land right now. Another expansion now going up for Ryang, who is taking another command center, trying to get an extra meal here. And Jokchi and Ryang just in the middle of the map still battling here, and the Vikings start to play a huge role here as Jokchi has the vision that he needs, forces his opponent to use scans in order to get the maximum range for his Siege Tanks. And well, also, they are still doing roughly the same builds. They still have uh, the same timings for their command centers, just a little bit apart. And both of them are at 200 supply. And none of them wants to commit. And it's just so hard. You can't attack into the siege tanks. You cannot attack one of these positions. Just trying to flank a little bit. But it's just really, really difficult at this point. One slip up and you might just lose your marines and then the tanks as a consequence. Yeah, this, this game is right now like... I'm, I'm trying to figure out what... I feel like Josh is the one who wants to be more aggressive, whereas Ryung is kind of like the defensive player getting the faster upgrades and trying to take command centers faster. Um, 
And as a result, Josh is going to really struggle to find an opening here. But it looks like he, he thinks he's found one. And in fact, with his better Marine count, he's actually going to engage really well here. But he some of his users are not firing. He has the fast uh, siege up. And now he's moving in with the Marines. Is he able to break through? It doesn't look like it. Rian is able is able to hold at least for now. He his has three, three more finishes medivacs. now. And now the upgrade advantage over his opponent, but the battle is already over, and Ryung comes out ahead of it. Yeah, he definitely wow, does, and now he's going to lose even more because these upgrades are not uh -oh. done. Jokshi, you know, like I said, he's the one who's being the aggressor, and Ryung having the defender's advantage takes a huge lead here. Now he's got the upgrade lead as well. Even with plus three finishing, he doesn't have armor on the and way. And he's trying to drop on top of the siege tank. This does bode well for Jokshi. He's already down a game. He can't afford to lose this against Ryung. But Ryung is stimming in, taking down the siege tanks, taking the army of Jokshi apart, and the NS Hosa player is down 40 supply and really, really struggling. Yep, back at home. Three tanks at a time being produced for Ryung, who's already ahead in tanks 9 to 7. It's it's just not looking good for Jokshi, who's just continuously trying to be the aggressor. He's now he still has a huge group of units on the right side of the map that he may be able to take advantage if Ryung sends a, a too large of a force around, he might be able to find a weak point. That's all he can really hope for right now, but Ryung is actually going to keep the majority of his forces back and send a large force around the side. And I think eventually Jokshi may actually just be flanked and surrounded here. It's just such a huge lead for Ryung. He has 60 additional supply and now he's moving in with his Marines. He still has the upgrade advantage over his opponent. He has one additional armor upgrade and he might just as well drop into the main base with all his medivacs. He has a lot of options here. He needs to be a bit careful though. But with a 70 supply lead, a great economy and all these highly upgraded units, he is just the dominant player now. Jokji has to hold on to Bear Life, trying to get back into this match, but it's gonna take ages for him to max out again. Yeah, Ryung is just carefully inching forward right now, moving across the left side. He wants to, to get to a position where Jokshi's caught off guard. And I feel that Jokshi right now does have the better vision. He's got a sensor tower in the middle of the map. He's got Vikings flying around. So for that reason, Ryung does not feel as comfortable moving out. He is finally going to take out the sensor tower in the middle here with a good scan forward. And he actually, I think, is just going to go for it. He's going to attack from the right side and tear oh, through these he's units. He's moving in at the expansion, yep. moving in with siege tanks and marines. Planetary That's a planetary that is not done just he's yet. Not and it's going to die. He repaired way too late. The nail in the coffin. Now his economy is a lot worse than his opponents. The SCVs, they die as well. Brilliant play here by Ryang. He has the advantage and he makes sure that he is using it. Yeah, Ryung, our Terran versus Terran specialist here, really showing his skills right now against a GSL winner, a GSL champion. Sensor Tower does get sniped here, but he had to stem quite a few units in order to do so. Ryung, moving forward as a result, looks like he he just he's trying to get the perfect flank. He could have flanked several times in the past, but he's just like setting up flanks while going in and taking these bases out one by one. He's already gotten one. He's about to get two. Uh oh! If he gets the now, nah, if he takes out the third base now, and he does. This is basically over. Suddenly, there's no income anymore for Jack Cheese. Mind out his main base and at the natural. And Ryan now, even though he lost a few Marines, is in a position where he can just remax once again. He has 2,500 minerals, 1,000 gas. And Jack G, he cannot attack into Ryan. No, he can't. They look at this. We're just seeing uh -oh. him actually have the better concave time and time again. Look right at that carnage. Right oh tank. my god. Way too many siege tanks. Way too much firepower. GG. GG as Jokji loses game number two as well. So Where's Ryung up one oh. him. Very, very uh, positional game. You know, we didn't see really either player having the better macro decisions, the better multitasking. It was always about the positioning, and the positioning was consistently better for Young. And if you're the attacker, the aggressor like Jokji, if your opponent has a good defensive position constantly, where are you going to find an opening? You just, frankly, you won't. Yeah, that's exactly what we saw here. Ryang now with the 1-0 lead in the group as well. He's tied with Holt and Mines, while Jokji is down two games already. And he can basically kiss his chances goodbye. He needs to win both of his upcoming games if he wants to have a last shot for his Code S spot and hope for a tie situation. But this is already a very, very harsh frame. Yep. His game's coming up against Vines and he has another game coming up against um, uh, Suo Shin. Yeah. And up next, we're going to have Polt versus Suo Shin. And that is going to be a match that is, of course, really important for our Zerg player who's currently down a game. Yep. And 
it's going to be the matchup he's practiced for. You know, he only had one Protoss in the group. He did a six pool against him. Clearly, he's been training mostly for ZVT. Smartly so. With this many yeah. Terrans in the group, there's four Terrans, and you're the only Zerg. Okay, practice ZVT. And I'm expecting to see really good play out of him. All the Terrans had to prepare for a three matchup. They had to prepare for the mirror match for the TVP and the TVZ. But as Wolf pointed out, Suoshin kind of only had to prepare against Terran. He has three Terrans in his group. And if he really prepares well against Reyna's, um, yeah, well, Reyna's brothers, then suddenly he could take yeah. the uh, group or get out of it. The six pool Holt. already indicated that he wanted to play, well, a little bit more of a... Yeah, yeah. Uh, man, though, at MLG game. and at Iron Squid and at DreamHack, I mean, he... Against Zerg, he is just awesome. No matter what happens to him, he will just kill you. He <laughs> will kill you. He, He's great against Zerg. He, I think... I mean, this may make some people on the internet upset, but I almost feel that Polt is better than Marine King with his splits against Banelings. He is so good in the late game. We are going to have a five-minute break. When we get back, Polt versus Suho Shen. Where 